by God's grace, as we know, we have been going over lessons that has to do with the Christian doctrine, and uh, we have uh, made progress. And uh, this week, we want to continue with the lesson we had from First Timothy chapter one, and this time we will. Uh, begin with verse 12. We stopped at verse 11 last time. And so here is God's word from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, and uh, let's see, up to 20. So here is the message. The Apostle Paul continue his message to the Pastor Timothy. Timothy chapter 1, so verse 11 says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injury, injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and let's see uh, and with love which is in Christ Jesus. Five, uh, 15. This is a faithful scene and worthy of all acceptance or acceptation, acceptation, uh, that is the King James grammar, that Christ Jesus came unto the world or into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. 16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory for ever and ever. Amen. 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the profession, uh, prophecies rather, pardon me, which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away 
concerning faith have made shipwreck. 20. Of whom is Hermenius and Alexandra, who, uh, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Amen. This is First Timothy chapter twelve. First uh, Timothy chapter one, verses twelve to twenty is what we have read, which is a continuation from the uh, chapter we read of uh, last week. And uh, so we continue with the study, as we have said, it's a necessary principle of the guideline that God wants us to follow. Here is the Apostle Paul writing to the pastor, uh, uh, Timothy, encouraging him in all aspects of uh, the Christian work. And he is, as we continue, he says, I thank my God and my Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me, that means the Apostle Paul speaking about himself, for that he counted him, the Apostle Paul, faithful, putting him into the ministry, which means he, the Apostle Paul, considered himself disqualified regarding the Christian world because actually he didn't even know uh, the truth about the gospel. But once Christ called him, he found himself, oh, me? Really? Oh, and then, then he became so humble and, uh, you know, took it on and said, well, I would do better than others. And he did, as we know, that uh, he really, really, uh, you know, considered himself, you know, ready to serve, ready to do anything that God wanted him to do. So he did that. But verse 13, who was before, is talking about, talking about what he did, which was very, very uh, sad. And uh, But then he knew that God had forgiven him. And for that reason, he was ready to preach the gospel anywhere to anyone without any limitations. And so who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious? You know, why is he saying all this? Because he sent people to prison. He sent people to be killed. Because in those days, he became, well, uh, he was doing the government at that time's uh, job uh, and uh, trying to arrest anybody. Oh, this person is a... He was arresting, you know, send them uh, to prison and some of them uh, were killed. But I obtained mercy. He is now confessing what Christ did to him uh, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. See, uh, sometimes... We hear the gospel and uh, we feel, well, you know, we know it. And in his case, he is confessing that he didn't understand. He didn't know uh, what he was doing. He thought he was, you know, just doing something. And that is why people in this world, people will meet, people will know and all. We have to be prayerful that God will help them. Because some people do things and they think, they are doing a favor, but in actual fact, they are really, really lost in their life. And we need to pray that God will change them as he changed the Apostle Paul. God will bring them to faith and help them to understand what the gospel really means and not uh, to abuse and to cause problem and to cause uh, hatred and death to some people. That is the Apostle Paul now confessing to how he was because he realized that it was done without uh, God's commandment. He was doing it. He was thought he was following the government at that time, the authorities. 
but not knowing that what he was doing was really really wrong and verse 14 and the grace of our lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in christ jesus so we see that he is confessing and then proclaiming that it is only by grace only by god's mercy that he was able to reach that level of spirituality that he was able to preach and share the gospel and we in our day should also be saying lord please help me use me so that what i have learned what i have heard i will be able to share them with others i'm not hearing the gospel and then or listening to the gospel and then keeping it to myself or keeping it in my uh you know cupboard locking it up and then forgetting about it we need to share what god has given to us so that the gospel will flow some people that we know we feel oh these people is already a christian but uh, he could be lost or she could be lost teaching something that's all uh, following something which is not right so may the lord help us we go to verse 14, 15 now this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He is telling us that we consider him the greatest apostle and all that. Fine. But then he is humbling himself here to confess that out of ignorance, he was doing something, enduring people, killing people, not directly, he didn't kill, but then when he sent people to prison, and who knows what was done to them. So he is saying that with the grace that is available to all, and God counting him worthy to use for his ministry. You know, God wanted to save the world, save people one at a time. And he says, into uh, the fellowship, when God called him into Christianity, what happened? He says, God wanted to save sinners, and he was one of those. He was one of those, should I say, uh, leaders who was doing the wrong thing. But God snatched him out of it and brought him into fellowship with him. And so he is taking himself that he is one of the, uh, you know, the worst sinners, if we may use that word. And then, but God, in his grace and mercy, saved him. And verse 16 says, How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He is telling us that he became an example of somebody who has been rescued by the Lord Jesus Christ and into the pattern, into the agenda that God has for him and for others. Again, see what he says? That in me, first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should so a pattern which is an example to others who will also be saved. And so God is saving people every day. 
in everything that we do should also be to the extent that we are also helping and sharing the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to them who may not know anything about the gospel. Verse 17 Now unto the King eternal immortal invisible the only wise God. See what he's saying? He is giving God the honor, the praise and every uh, you know, title that is due God. He is king eternal and he is immortal. He is always invisible. And if God is king in our life, in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, then he is also, uh, he is always there. We cannot remove him. He is immortal. He is not like us. That God created us so that in his image we may serve him, we do all that he wants us to serve, and that he is also invisible. We cannot uh, really uh, be invisible until he puts up in that um, category when by God's grace we are all in heaven and then we have the new uh, new new life in us. The only uh, wise God, he is the only one, uh, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So see all the praises that he is giving to God for what God had done uh, to him to save him and to give him that charge or that responsibility of preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to all those who need to hear it. Right. So what else does he say? Verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee. What is the charge? The charge that he is committing uh, to Timothy is also the commandment, the instruction, the guidelines that this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. You see, he considered uh, Pastor Timothy his son because Timothy showed that he was really, really, really obedient to him and served God through the Apostle Paul. And so he was obedient in so many ways, in every way, I should say, that uh, uh, even though he was not uh, a Jew, but then when God called him, he did everything and he became one uh, who was uh, the Apostle Paul's, uh, uh, we should say, right man, right hand man. And he did everything according to his uh, uh what the Apostle Paul wrote. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which were uh, before on thee, that thou be thou by thee mightest war, a good warfare. So uh, he realizes that the Christian world, the Christian responsibility was not something that you have to play with. It's a serious business. It's a, 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 a profession that once uh, once we realize that, oh, we are doing God's will, we are obedient to God's word, it's uh, already been said because of how he also dedicated himself to serving the Apostle Paul. And in truth, through the gospel, he is telling him that what God has already done, according to God's word, that he, the um, Pastor Timothy, was supposed to ensure that he was also following every pattern 
every godly instruction, godly commandment that he has given to him. Again, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the profession, prophecies rather, uh, which were before on thee. So, based upon what the Apostle Paul is saying, Timothy, the pastor Timothy, had been studying the scriptures and his father, his, fa his mom, the parent, the grandmother, and every one of them have contributed to helping him. And so it became known that there was a prophecy on him that he was going to do what uh, the Apostle Paul had called him to be, that he was humbling himself to learn, to grow. And through the Apostle Paul, he became one of his sons. That's why he said that he considered him a son. And that is to help us to know that when we know God's word and we have uh, a brother, a sister, or a son uh, who is not ours, we can consider that person as our son, our brother, sister, father, mother. And then if we have to share the gospel, we need to do it according to God's will. That they, by them, might as war a good warfare. So he is encouraging the apostle, uh, the apostle Paul is encouraging t uh, Pastor Timothy that he wants him to learn to study the scriptures. And once he has studied it, then he will be able to fight. Not fight as in, but to uh, be able to defend the gospel, to be able to share the message of the gospel to everyone. And he is able, to, he is using the, uh, you know, he says war, but it's not uh, warfare. It's not telling him that he has to go to uh, war, but, or to fight, but that he will be able to defend the gospel, protect the gospel, share the gospel to anyone who may need to hear it because it is a warfare when the devil is obstructing and causing um, you know, hindrances. Once we know that we are for God, we are fighting for God, we are preaching because of God, we are doing God's will, then we know it isn't going to be easy. There are hindrances the devil puts in our path. For one reason or the other, he doesn't want us to do God's will. But once we see it, then we say, oh, this is what the devil wants to do. Then I'm going to uh, request energy, power, protection, and the power from the Holy Spirit to do what I need to do. Let's think about it this way. We are learning something uh, for work, for school, for anything. And we have a teacher, an instructor, a professor teaching us. But then somebody is out there also teaching the wrong thing, trying to create confusion so that what is being taught, we don't follow it, we follow something else. We we'll understand that this is what the devil has been doing. We may think, oh, the devil is not. The devil is, hasn't stopped. The devil has continued from the Garden of Eden. And he has, you know, shown his, he's always adjusting his ways to obstruct us. But we must be aware that because of his presence, we are not going to stop. We will continue to apply. We will continue to seek God's uh, protection and blessing. We will continue to say, Lord, help me. Grant me the wisdom I need. Allow your Holy Spirit to teach me what I need to do, so, what to do so that I will not fall astray. We know there are Christians trying to serve God, but they are not 100%. They are 10%, 20%, and, all, and some of them just... You know, only 5% or 1%. But God wants us to be 100%. And so we pray that we will ask for God's power 
That's just as we prayed from the beginning. We need to continue praying. Lord, help me. Please save me. Please cover me with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow your Holy Spirit to teach me the pattern, the truth, the original ways of serving you so that I will not fall short, so that I will not follow uh, something different. That is what the Apostle Paul was uh, praying that the young pastor Timothy will continue. And we know he did. Verse 12, uh, 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 18, going to verse 19, holding faith. He says, and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Those who are supposed to be doing the right things, they have gone astray. They have gone off the bridge. They have gone off a, a different route. And they are causing problems. Just as in this world today, the Christian world, it's, well, some of us see, some of us don't see, but then it is being bombarded with fake religion, fake Christianity, fake so many things. And if we are not careful, we will be swept along with those things. That's why we need our scriptures every day. We need to pray every morning, every evening, and throughout the day when we can. And say, Lord, help me. Here is the Apostle Paul writing to the pastor, Timothy. So if the Apostle Paul is writing to a pastor, Timothy, then it means that, what about members? So he is encouraging him that we need the presence of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do so that what we do will be successful. And so he is saying that we need to be careful. And why should we be careful? Because if we are not careful, verse 20 tells us that of whom is Hermenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. This is a very uh, strong language, a strong event. The Apostle Paul is reminding Pastor Timothy that I don't know, we may not know, but there were two people who were causing problems. And what did he do? He had to cause them, you know, take them off. Or, should we say, cause a problem in their lives so that the devil will be able to... I mean, it's, it's a very, very strong language here. Because if a Christian, a pastor as the Apostle Paul, is going to, you know, give people into the devil's hand, for the devil to torment them, for the devil to do things that, it's, it must be serious, because they were doing something. They were saying things which were not right. They were blaspheming. And blaspheming is something that is done against God. And whether or not these people knew the gospel or understood the gospel, what they were doing was so strong that the Apostle Paul had to do that, had to commit them and cause them to have a problem in their lives. And that is uh, when they, it's more or less like provoking Pastor uh, the Apostle Paul to cause that on them. And when people provoke pastors and hinder them 
and cause problems for them. The pastors can say things and do things that will also cause a problem for those people. But we always pray that we don't have to have that, we don't have to use that power that the Apostle Paul used here. And so we need to always be praying for even those who are hindering our progress. We don't do anything as the Lord Jesus Christ said. He says, bless, don't curse. So we don't curse. We don't say uh, mean things to anyone. We just pray that God have mercy upon them. God, please uh, open their eyes and bring them out of that problem in which they are causing whatever they are causing to whomever. It is our desire to always pray for God to open their eyes from where they have been deceived. And many people are being deceived in this world. And they also want to deceive others, especially they want to deceive Christians. We need to pray that those who are causing problems in the church will not be able to hinder our progress, but that we will, by His grace, through the Holy Spirit power, be protected from them and continue to serve and worship God in spirit and in truth, according to God's word. May the Lord help us all, because we see people, sometimes family members, sometimes those we know, they want to convince us into sin, they want to corrupt us. They want to cause problems. But we need to remember that our response is to pray for them. And uh, we've already read it. It says, bless them that curse you. Do good to them. So whatever situation we are facing, we should not retaliate. We should not pay back. We should not do anything to cause them to be lost. Our goal, our aim is always to pray for mercy. Mercy upon them so that God's grace will be revealed to them and whatever situation they are in, God will open their eyes and change them. So our goal is never to cause, never to cause problems, never, never to uh, use a, a bad language on anyone or to curse them to all those things uh, that we won't mention, but to always say, Lord, have mercy. And we pray that this will be what we will remember to do every time there is a challenge on us or as a problem that anyone wants to cause on us. May God grant us this blessing. Amen.